beard. Randy says start with a beard. Uh, you may see I have a bit of a beard here now. Uh, this is more or less my uh, no-shave November growth. Uh, I'm actually only bringing it up to show that uh, in the time that it took me to uh, make another video, I grew a beard. Uh, that doesn't bode well for uh, quick updates, does it? Um, this uh, video was supposed to be up early October and is instead going to be early December. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of how it goes around here. I'm at least in part blaming this guy. Hey, wait, Randy. Why, why are we only? Why are we? Right, we're we're blaming him? Randy for not coming over when he was going to. Him okay. and John. To be fair. Both losers. My car doesn't work. Which makes you a loser. I'm working on that. All right. For how long? How long you've been working on that? Shh. That's what I thought. Grade A loser. Anyway, point wait, is. Wait, when are you gonna fix your power steering? Point is, I'm going to be now filming a how I make this sword tutorial. It's not really so much a tutorial to teach you how to do it as it is showing how I do it. I would do a more tutorially video. That's really not a word. I just made that up. But uh, I use some tools that aren't available to everybody. Uh, I have the good fortune of having a very large wood shop that is on my property. Uh, and gives me access to all sorts of power tools, uh, like band saws and the like. Uh, so, most people don't have access to that. So, if you don't, you can certainly do pretty much the same thing. You just got to use hand tools, and it takes longer. And I'm really impatient, so I use a table saw and whatnot. So, we've got right here. Now we can get to the actual sword itself. It's a piece of wood with our uh, katana drawn on it. Uh, the way we did this was we marked out uh, the different parts of the, hand of the katana. So we've got the handle here, then the blade length over here, and then it's marked at the beginning, middle, and end. And then we marked, we wanted a half inch drop in the blade so we used another my explanation is failing um, we're gonna show you instead hang on okay so we've got over here marked the uh, this is basically the edge of the blade and this is the back of the blade at, at the where the blade starts same thing marked over here bottom of blade back of blade and then in the middle bottom, back. Uh, and then we take another board and place it on the two marks there and push it down to the middle and it makes a nice curve, as you can see there. And then pencil it in. And you move that board and you have a nice, beautiful, curved katana. And then we hand drew that in. This actually all happened before, we're just pretending now. Okay, now that that is all explained, what we're going to try and do is, in fact, cut four katanas all at once. To do that, we're going to use this stuff. Elmer's Craft Bond Spray Adhesive. Uh, and these other three boards. Four in total. The idea is we will spray these three with uh, spray adhesive, stack them all up, and top it with the one that has the template drawn on it. Uh, once we have them temporarily bonded together, clearly don't want a permanent bond, uh, I might add a little bit of tape just to help hold it uh, while we're cutting. Uh, then we can cut them out and just use an easy wedge, light wedge to uh, split them apart. The glue doesn't bond super strong, uh, so it should work perfectly. 
uh, assuming all goes well and we have no mishaps like where we glue all these boards together and can't get them apart. That would ruin my day. Well, maybe not my day, but I'd be upset. Alright, so this mess here is uh, the shop where I do most of my uh, work with the power tools. There's this bird up here that's going crazy flying around. Uh, apparently we interrupted its sleep here and it's none too happy about it. But we're just going to ignore it uh, and get to work. I'm actually going to hand the camera over to Randy here in a second while I cut and then uh, show you how we do things. This is our uh, block of hopefully to be katana. I put some uh, duct tape around the top and bottom to uh, help hold it together while we're cutting uh, just so the bandsaw doesn't pull it apart. I don't know that it will really be an issue, but I think it can't hurt. I think we'll have more problems pulling it apart. So, it'll be easy. Piece of cake, trust me. Uh, I guess we'll get to it. All right, important note here. Um, I don't practice very good shop safety. Um, I really should be wearing goggles. I'm not. I was going to for the sake of this video, you know, to promote good habits on the internet. Um, but I can't find any, and I don't want to go back to the house to uh, get some. So, despite the fact that I'm using a bandsaw without goggles, don't do it. It's bad. Your eyes are good. Protect them. And then you will continue to see for a good long time. <laughs> two of just one, but uh, I'm not really much of an artisan on this thing to begin with. That's okay. Uh, screwed up a couple areas like here, but most important skill you will ever learn is how to uh, cover up your mistakes. I'm just going to go and trim this off here and then get a plane out and we'll see if we can uh, smooth that up and make it look nice and pretty. Alright, so after much searching in this huge mess here, uh, found a plane. And goggles. And yeah, I found some goggles uh, actually over here. I, I'm not sure I would have worn them anyway because I think they would have been a bigger hazard to my eyes than the bandsaw. Oh, come on. You just got to blow them on them a little bit. Anyway, so if you've never used a plane, it's pretty simple. It's basically got a knife here and you just slide it along and it shaves wood. Point is, then I can slowly shave this. Getting rid of any lumps that my terrible band sawing may have created. Um, the bad areas are here. And there was one over here, but we fixed it already with this because that's how amazing it is. Alright, uh, so I use the uh, belt sander to smooth out this tip here while Randy yacked on the phone. Uh, and the problem with the back of the blade is because of the curve, you can't really use the planer on it. Um, so I'm kind of smoothing out just a bit with the belt sander. I'm trying to be really careful because it can really take off a lot if you're not careful. So now we have one big fat katana. Now for the most experimental part of this, we will attempt to pop them You're apart. Them. Did you have a plan for this already? Yes. Oh, look at that. Coming apart already. And there's one. 
Oh goodness, not all tacky and residue -y. Get a little bit, but not too bad. Looking pretty good. And now we have four katanas. Blanks, so to speak. A blade with no handle or the other bit of residue that should probably be washed off at some point. But point is, four blanks in I don't know how long are we doing this? Half an hour down here, maybe? Time we can yeah, do maybe. Something like that. Relevant. Point is, not very long. Four swords. Uh, so from now on they'll be done individually. So I'll only show you one of them obviously. Uh, this one maybe. Or maybe one of these. No, not those. No? You've already tainted them with your touch. Yep. Okay. Yeah, taint. Now I'm gonna set up the uh, blade sharpener, so to speak. I really like this setup. You'll see what it is in a second. Turn the camera off now. Okay, so we've got our katana. We marked uh, halfway along the width with a piece of red duct tape. Uh, so we know how far to sharpen it to. And then on this side, I just made some marks at half an inch up. Um, it's going to be kind of gradual, so it won't be like a stark line or anything. Uh, so it doesn't really matter too much. And then, set up my uh, sword sharpener device. Uh, this is just the belt sander turned upside down in the uh, vise. Really shouldn't forget that word. And then have it set to, when I turn it on, blow the sand away from me. Which instantly is right at where Randy is standing. kind of see already how that works and then I usually sharpen it kind of up to the halfway mark first and then go to um, move it out here uh, until I only have to worry about one thing at a time. Uh, the battery on the camera is getting low and the spare battery is at the house which is like I don't know, a quarter mile-ish away less than but still it's up a big hill and I don't want to go there for just for a battery. Uh, so I'm going to go and finish this up then show you what it looks like up at the house. Okay, so we've got the sanding done. I got most of the sawdust off of me now. Uh, and they look pretty good. And when I say they, I mean it. I only sanded one. Um, battery's running low, so hopefully I can uh, get this done before it dies. Looks something like that. Uh, it needs, there'll be some hand sanding to uh, smooth it up a bit. Also down there, the belt sander doesn't get very well, so we'll use a file on there by where the handle is. Um, that's all we've got for uh, tonight. Um, but next week, and when I say next week, I swear, I mean next week. Yeah, hopefully Randy will be over again uh, to help finish these. Uh, if he happens to work like a loser, then I will just have to do it myself without him. Probably turn out better that way anyway, but you know. Say goodnight, Randy. Good night, everybody. I is tired, and I have to drive Randy all the way home. And like a retard, he lives like 35 minutes away from me. So I've got an hour drive ahead of me, and a uh, presentation that I have to prepare for as my final for class. And uh, yeah, I haven't started at all.